what? All off season, I've been talking about free agency. And wide receiver three might already be on this rock. What's good, people? It's your boy, Mr. Rome. Cowboys fan talk. Right back. Like I never left. What's up with y'all, man? How y'all feeling? I'm feeling good, man. Cowboys mandatory minicamp just wrapped up. I know it's a sad day because it's like, what are we going to do for Cowboys news for the next 45 to 50 days? It's list season, baby. All kinds of lists is about to come out. Who's the best quarterback? Who's the best cornerbacks? Who's the best running back? Who got the best this and that? Get ready. It's list season and just be prepared for it. That's what happens during this time every year. It's like Christmas. It comes around like a holiday. But we're going to talk about one specific thing with Cowboys Minicamp. And before I get started with that, y'all do me a favor, man. Listen, I am like 50, maybe 60 away from 26K. I know I've been asking every day, but listen, all the new subscribers, all the people that's been showing me love for years, I appreciate y'all. But if you're not subscribed and you want to join the cartel, just do me a favor, man. Just hit the subscribe button. I'm close. Then we can start working our way towards 27K. Um, Wide receiver three. Wide receiver three is what I wanted to talk about. Specifically the fact that you know, we all know that C.D. Lamb's not there. C.D. Lamb is missing mandatory minicamp. It was three days. He's not with the team. He ain't even in the state, I think. And... The fines add up to 100000 I said the other day on my live stream, it doesn't even matter because they're going to wrap those fines right into his contract when he does sign. So it ain't going to matter. He's not going to lose no money. But you know what? I was thinking, and y'all know I always try to look at things from different angles. And I pr promise, I will give y'all a full recap of mini camp, all the stuff that I can gather, my thoughts on it. I promise. You know, the Micah thing and Micah versus Mike Zimmer thing. We talked about that. Um, did a live stream yesterday. Check it out. It was pretty dope. Um, today, I want to focus on wide receiver three, but I'll give you a, a, a wrap up of everything I can find with the rookies, um, how everybody's coming together, the fact that the linebackers is doing dinner together and things like that. It's small little nuances, but we got plenty of time. Like I said, it's got like 45, 50 days. Um, CD Lamb not being there is turning out to be a good thing. From everything I've been hearing, and I've been hearing clips from Brian Broadish, Patrick Losey Walker, Aisha Morrison, shout out to them on the Cowboys break. They was talking about um, what they've been seeing at camp and Bobby Belt was talking about it as well and I'm, I'm starting to get this little nuanced conversation of why receiver three is not settled I know we wanted to hand it to Jalen Tolbert I know earlier on in his his young career I was like we might have found out why receiver three he's going to grow into it and it just hasn't happened I thought he was going to take the reins from Gallup nope Gallup gets hurt still couldn't do it right then Gallup is gone. He's released. It's Jalen Tober season. He looks sweet. He got the one jersey and the visor. And he's wearing the one leg tight. And he out there, you know, he looked the part. But he hasn't definitively snatched it or I wouldn't be hearing about these other players. I'm hearing that Jalen Brooks is out there balling. His separation is great. He always had better separation than Jalen Tober since last year from training camp. We knew that. That was one of the things he can separate, you know, um, but he is a little undersized. So I think that was his stand back. I think Tobert's a little bit bigger than him. But hey, slot wise, I'm hearing that Brooks might be the guy. He just might be the guy. Then you hear a whole bunch of good things about they're finding ways to get Cavante Turpin involved in this offense. Like a lot more. Not like not just jet sweeps, but like. When he's out there, they're, they're putting a little package together for him, and they're targeting him more. And you're hearing like a lot of stuff about Kevontae Turpin. And I'm not surprised. Jalen Brooks might have surprised you a little bit because he was drafted in the seventh round. It looked like a throwaway pick, but he came in, and he, he just kept putting, stacking good days, stacking good days. Kevontae Turpin was the MVP of the XFL, or the USFL, I'm sorry, um, before they merged. He really, really put in work over there. His confidence is through the roof. He feels like he's that guy. You are an MVP of a league or a Heisman Trophy winner. At some point, you mentally tell yourself, I'm that dude. I know this is a whole different league, but he comes from a league where he was that dude. So he don't necessarily come on the field and feel like you can cover me. 
That's why even when we were getting the anti lock breaks beat off us in the San Francisco game last year, he's one of the people that broke off the score. When he gets on the field, he feels like every opportunity is one to show that he's a beast. And he's been saying that too. I feel like I'm Pro Bowl caliber. That's the confidence I want my potential wide receiver three or X factor or whatever you want to call him to have. So that's dope. But then you start to look at the real X factor, the wild card. Because like I said, I've been all off season. I've been saying, yo, maybe we need to go get Michael Thomas. Is Hunter Renfro still available? You know, really just kind of looking out there like, yo, do we need to add a veteran to this group to make the young boys work? And I'm not necessarily opposed to that. We bring in a veteran receiver. The young boys just got to outwork them. But the X factor is Ryan Flournoy. Ryan Flournoy is the X factor. That's why on the thumbnail, the arrow's pointing to him. Not to Brooks, who is a beast. Jaden Tober ain't even on the thumb. He got to he gotta get me some. I need to hear some good things come out about Tober. I haven't heard it. You know, Kavante Turpin's going to get on the field. He's going to be a return man. He's going to have his little niche. So he's not going anywhere. He's just trying to see if he can work his way into getting three or four targets a game instead of maybe one or two. That's where Kavante Turpin is. But Ryan Flournoy, size-wise, like literally being around like 6'2", I know it's a little bit of... He might be 6'2", might be 6'1", whatever you want to say. But he's bigger than every other receiver. Like baby Des Bryant big. But his RAS score, this is the thing that blows me away. His RAS score is better than every other receiver that we've drafted. I think, period. Literally, it, it came out, his RAS score, just his measurables, speed, and like all of his stuff that he ran with the combine stuff. Better than C.D. Lamb, better than Tolbert, better than Dez Bryant. It just makes me be like, what? Because, you know, Dez is a physical specimen. So, Brian Flournoy, and this is the thing, Patrick Nosey Walker. See, you're getting Bobby Belt saying that Jalen Brooks is out there looking good, making catches, right? You're you're hearing Brian Broaddus co-sign Kevontae Turpin saying he's out there and putting in work. You know what I'm saying? But now you're hearing Patrick Nosey Walker. This is the second time. Second time. He don't just say stuff for clout. That he said Ryan Flournoy is out there turning some heads. He had a catch today. I'll put it on the screen. He said we caught a back a, a back pylon catch. I wish I could find video on this, but I can't. Um, where he elevated, caught the ball at the highest point, and was able to get his feet down and drag him. And you're like, well, that's not that big deal. Receivers do that every day. I think it's dope. I just think it's pretty dope that our six-round receiver is out there putting on a pretty dope show at mandatory minicamp, even if it's with the second team. I think that he's going to make people at least consider him for wide receiver three, and that'll be dope. I think it'll be very dope. If he's good enough, maybe we can move Brandon Cooks into the slot and things will get really dangerous, but that's the, that's the conversation for later in the summer. I'm just looking at this like this. Our wide receiver three might already be on this roster. And I ain't even mentioned Jalen Tolbert. Now, I'm not saying he's having a horrible OTAs or minicamp. I'm saying he hasn't done nothing to stand out. When you're getting, let's let's just say, you're getting co-signers in the media and, and good favor going on. And, and the people that are watching these practices are saying things. You want to have your person that's like, yo, I'm out there. I feel like Patrick Nosey Walker has put his stamp on Flournoy. Remember, Flournoy trains and is mentored by Chris Carter, Hall of Fame receiver. That's a that's a check in a good way. You know what I'm saying? Kevontae Turpin already has been a pro bowler and an all-pro returner already. So, you know, I think it's pro bowler. I don't know if it's all-pro. But he already stamped himself as a asset to the team. Right? Jalen Brooks was supposed to just be like a throwaway pick, I, I swear. But I hear his name. Bobby Butt is saying, I'm seeing him do more than I've been hearing about Tolbert. And maybe I'm completely wrong. Y'all let me know if there's been other news about Tolbert. But outside of me hearing that Jalen Tolbert works with Dak Prescott a bunch and Jalen Tolbert did go train with Brandon Cooks over this offseason, during this offseason, you know, that's his person. Brandon Cooks is big enough, Jalen Tolbert. But everyone else in the media is bigging up these other receivers. So at this point, it has my eyes open. This wide receiver three thing is wide open. Who's going to take it? 
my money right now, I'm gonna be in a thousand with you. Might be Ryan Florinoy. But y'all let me know in the comments who you think might take the wide receiver three position because it is not close. It's work to be done, man. The drought is here. The next 45 to 50 days, ain't going to be no practices. But don't worry. You're going to be in content every day because that's how CFT get down. It's your boy, Mr. Rome. I'll holler. Oh, yeah, hit subscribe.